Pokemon Red and Blue came out in 1996 during a surprisingly sad period in Japanese history. To understand how such a positive and upbeat franchise grew out of a depression, you need to understand Japan's healing boom. Following the financial collapse of 1991, Japan went through a period known as the Lost Decade. The guarantee of a lifelong job disappeared. People were working as hard or harder to succeed, but getting anywhere was difficult because the economy was in shambles. The pressure was isolating, and the country entered a long period of cultural pessimism. In response to recession stress, people searched for ayashi, ways to relieve anxiety and escape loneliness. If this sounds familiar, it's because the USA is going through a similar cycle following the Great Recession of the late 2000s. But we call it self-care. <laughs> Emotional intimacy became an industry. That's what the healing boom was, the commoditization of closeness. Japan already had adorable characters. Before the healing boom, a kawaii character like Hello Kitty or Doraemon would be slapped on a purse or turned into a bento lunch. But this new desire for closeness meant that people wanted more. They wanted interaction. The new mascots were things you cared for and got emotional satisfaction from. The result? Robotic pets like Paro and Aibo, and franchises like Tamagotchi, Digimon, and of course, Pokemon. So what set it apart? Satoshi Tajiri, the creator of Pokemon, grew up in rural Machida in the early 70s. He was obsessed with discovering and collecting insects. It was a group activity. The kids shared information about how best to catch bugs. When Machida industrialized, so did Tajiri's interests. He became passionate about video games. When he started making his own, he wanted modern children to experience the idyllic feeling of catching critters. The communal aspect was an important part of that. An interviewer asked, So back when Pokemon didn't even have a name, you were thinking about the linked gameplay? I knew it had potential to be a linked game. He imagined actual living organisms moving back and forth across the cable. An aspiring Pokemon master had to physically link with other players to complete their Pokedex, a fact underscored by the connection cable's frequent appearance in Japanese commercials. The feeling of connection, and the image itself, is still a quintessential part of the franchise. Pokemon were virtual companions, like plenty of other products at the time. But there was no way to catch them all without meeting other players. It encouraged developing real-life relationships at a time when people were desperately looking for that. That's why Pokemon endures. The need for connection still hasn't gone away. Thank you for watching this video. If you're not already subscribed to Polygon, what are you doing? Do it now! We've got a bunch of other great videos, including one about how Pokemon Snap was way ahead of its time. And uh, while you're at it, check your posture and maybe have a glass of water. Only we call it self-care. Is that creepy? Yeah, that's, that's way worse. Okay. <laughs>